Okay, now we're going to talk about the rational zeros theorem. Here is our polynomial. This should look familiar. This is the same formula we had before when we graphed the polynomials. a sub n is the coefficient that comes in front of the x with the highest power, and a of 0 is the last number that's not connected to any variable. So knowing those, we can use just those two numbers to determine how many times the graph possibly can cross the x-axis. We're coming up with a list of possible real rational zeros. So what does rational mean? Rational means that you can express a number as a fraction. So square roots would not be included in this. So this list right here, it's only going to give you a possible list of rational zeros where the graph's going to cross. So whole numbers or fractions is what this is going to give you. The formula for it is you're going to take factors of the last number over factors of the first number. So that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to do an example. List the possible real zeros of this one. This is 3x cubed minus 7x squared minus 22x plus 8. That's the f of x that we're working with here. When we use this formula, we're looking at factors of the last number, factors of 8, divided by factors of 3. So let's write that out. We're going to do factors of 8 divided by factors of 3. That's what we're doing here uh, for that one. So we need to actually write that out. So first of all, we have to know, well, what's a factor? Well, a factor is a number that evenly divides into each of these here. So you're going to look for numbers that divide evenly into 8, numbers that divide evenly into 3, and we're going to write those all out. Now, of course, when you do those, you could have minus numbers and plus numbers. It doesn't really matter, positive, negative numbers. So because of that, we're going to put a plus or minus next to each one of our factors because we can have different combinations. 2 and 4 multiply to make 8, but negative 2 and negative 4 also make 8. So we're going to consider all those plus and minus situations by putting plus or minus there in front. Okay, now 1 divides evenly into 8. Uh, 2 divides evenly into 8, 4, and also 8. Those are the factors, those are the numbers that divide evenly into 8. Then on the bottom, you're going to do factors of 3. Plus or minus 1, plus or minus 3. That's it. Those are the only factors of 3. But you don't want to leave your answer as this list. You want to actually write all of it out. So the way that you do that is you're going to take all the numbers on top divided by all the numbers on the bottom, and you're going to write a list on that. So here's what it'll look like. It's, okay, so I have plus or minus, I have 1 over 1. 1 over 1 is just 1, that's it. Then I have plus or minus 2 over 1, which is just 2. Then I have 4 over 1, which is 4. And then I have 8 over 1. So you're going to take all of them on top, divide by 1. Then you're going to take all of them on top and divide by 3. So next we're going to have plus or minus 1 third, plus or minus 2 thirds, plus or minus 4 thirds, and plus or minus 8 thirds. This whole list right here, this is going to be the answer to this question. They want a list, and so this is a list of all of them. Now what that means is if I take a look at the graph itself and I see where it crosses, you'll see that the graph is actually going to cross at one of the numbers here on this list. It might be one or more numbers, but you'll see the graph will cross at least once on one of the numbers on this list. That's what the rational zero theorem uh, says. To find out what, which one it actually is, you have to actually either use a graphing calculator on that or uh, we're going to do synthetic division where you actually would take this, this one right here and you would do synthetic division with each individual number on this list until you find one that gives you a remainder of zero. That will tell you then that that particular number is in fact going to be an x-intercept. And that's what the next questions we're going to do are going to talk about. We'll talk about once you find the list, how do you test them and how do you find out which ones are actually the real zeros.